1998. Rare, a popular video game developer released a new platforming game rivaling the infamous Super Mario 64. Of course, I'm talking about Banjo-Kazooie. To many, including myself, it is the best 3D platformer. But what would happen if we took that aspect away? Would it still be a good game? Is it even possible to beat? That's what I want to find out. Is it possible to beat Banjo-Kazooie without jumping? Let's have a nice fun run with no genocidal thoughts. Oh shit, well, you can't even get the first Jiggy in the game. Did I say Banjo-Kazooie? Let's see if we can beat my actual favorite game, Banjo-Tooie, without jumping. That's much better. This is how you make a sequel. You add stairs to the first Jiggy. Now this challenge will not be an easy task. You don't start with all your moves available in the beginning, but instead discover them as you unlock new worlds. Not only that, but to complete the game glitchless, you have to collect 70 out of the 90 Jiggies, and 9 of those Jiggies are tied to 9 Jinjo families, meaning 45 Jinjos to collect, and if you miss Uncle Tyrone, you ain't getting that family Jiggy, even if you have Laquisha, Chantel, Darnell, Jamal, and all the other members of the family. Now let's go over the rules. A jump can be defined as an A-press. An A-press actually has three parts to it. No, God! When A is pressed. No, God, please, no, no! When A is held. No! And when A is released. And no! Let's not get that technical. Only, it's only game. Why you have to be mad? Basically, you can't do this. None of that. Especially not that. And what would your mother say if she saw you doing that? Pretty much you can't press A on a flat surface or on the surface of water to gain height. Now you can press A for other actions like flapping Kazooie's wings in the air. And on flight pads. Because a jump is defined as pushing oneself off the surface and into the air by using the muscles in one's legs and feet. So let's assume that we're using our wings and not our legs here. With almost everything explained and Klungo defeated, let's meander along to Mayhem Temple, the first world of the game. The 10 jiggies available to us are Saving Bovina's Farm, Jade Snake Grove's Quicksand, Slumber's Treasure, Mayhem Kickball Tournament, Recovering Target Sand's Sacred Relic, Atop a Target Sand's Temple, The Slightly Sacred Chamber, Defeat Target Sand, Prison Compound's Quicksand, and finally Prison Compound's Pillars. To unlock the second world we have to collect at least three, which shouldn't be too hard. In fact, we are able to collect every single music note as well as every single new move. But the first thing we need to do is open up the way with a little mumbo magic. <laughs> Um, My body is ready. If you were wondering, Mumbo Jumbo and all other transformations will remain firmly on the ground like the bear and the bird. Well, most of them. But we can get to that later. While controlling the Golden Goliath, we can open up two gates. Greet this red Jinjo with a good morning kick to the face and collect our second Jiggy over the Jade Snake Grove's quicksand. With Mumbo's work done, he can sit down and relax on his armchair. Or not, because I can't jump back onto his chair. Luckily, I keep a cassette tape on hand for when I need to find a motivation to do something seemingly impossible. That's right, Mumbo, feel the burn! By just walking into the flames, I can position myself back onto the chair. It was either that or resetting the game, but I like this way better. With the two giant gates now open, let's proceed to completely ignore them because I can't really get any of the Jiggies behind them. What we can get are the two Jiggies in Target Zan's Sacred Chambers and the Jiggy from Saving Bovinus Farm by just playing the game normally. The rest of the Jinjos and Jiggies can be obtained by using the flight pad to fly over the ruins. Well, mostly the Jiggy atop the Target Zan's temple. 
Luckily, we did complete the Orange Jinjo family and got an extra Jiggy. Seven Jiggies in total is the best we can do so far. Slumber's Treasure and Target Sand Sacred Relic are atop of my arch enemy, the Dreaded Ledge. And the Mayhem Coliseum is inaccessible to Stony Banjo. Why would they make the stairs way too large for Stonies but only allow Stonies in? Seems suspicious. Like this tournament is just a front to cover up illicit activities. Anyways, I didn't transform Banjo into a stony. I'll save the global for a more pressing matter in the future. And finally, everything in the prison compound is unattainable. Get it out of here. I don't even want to look at it. Now just for a quick stop at the code chamber to make Banjo not as painfully slow. If you enter the code Super Banjo, you can increase Banjo and Kazooie's running speed. Trust me, this is the only way to play the game. The worlds are too big to walk at normal speed, and it doesn't affect the gameplay that much. And just to be fair, I also put in the code Super Baddies, just so the enemies think they have a chance. Now we can move on to the second world, Glitter Gulch Mine. I'll just take a quick walk up these stairs and we'll be there in no time. Ah, uh, where did the stairs go? Oh. God damn it, runs over. Let's make it official. You cannot beat Banjo Tui without jumping because the Hag One destroyed the stairs. You know, I just wanted to make a nice run. Prove something to myself that I could do it, that I could achieve something with my worthless life, but no! Loser! You're a loser! Are you feeling sorry for yourself? Well, you should be, because you are dirt! I tried clipping through the rocks, but let's face it, I would be the worst game tester. I never clip through anything. Loser! The only way up to the plateau is by taking three small jumps or two big jumps up these rocks, or one really big jump directly to the top. I chose the one really big jump with a side of shame. Yeah, that's right. Let's continue on and see what is the least amount of jumps needed to beat Banjo Tooie. After getting some grenade and fire eggs into Overworld, we made our way like the filth we are into the mines. Yeehaw! The 10 available jiggies to mine in Glitter Gulch Mine are Reuniting Dilberta and Bullion Bill, Ordinance Storage, Crushing Shed, Defeat Old King Cole, Navigating Generator Room, Braving the Power Shed, Waterfall Cavern, Underground Pipe Maze, Racing Canary Mary, and Behind the Waterfall. Almost immediately I got stuck in the flowing river with shore walls too high to climb out. I was going to kill myself with grenade eggs in the lazy river when something magical happened. I will call this the bomb boost. Patent pending. Sadly, this new technique is limited to small ledges and was not helpful in getting me into Mumbo Skull. Luckily, Humba Wumba is easy enough to visit, and she can transform us into TNT. Let's just clear things up right away. This little guy is not jumping, he is bouncing. Very different, he was born this way, he can't control it. You wouldn't make a guy with Tourette's contribute to a swear jar. I play Bioshock, I play with my dick on a Tuesday, fuck you and Jesus, fuck you. Bitch lasagna, bitch lasagna. Bitch lasagna. They can't control themselves, are we clear? Good. There's not much I could do with the TNT, all I did was free Canary Mary, and got some music notes on higher ledges using the larger hitbox you get when you self-destruct. At the end I was feeling pretty defeated. The only jiggies I could get was the one from the waterfall cavern, and from the minecart race with Canary Mary. This is probably the main reason why this is a jump challenge and not an A-press challenge. All the other jiggies in this world are either barely out of reach or blocked by these boulders we need to destroy. But A, I don't have the move to do so because it's on top of a literal mountain, and B, even if I did have the move, it requires you to jump in the air and press C to activate. So how can I possibly use it, let alone get on top of the boulder? Luckily we have just barely enough jiggies to open the next world. We needed 8 in total and we've got 9. At least I can finally get out of this shithole. Oh no, to climb the rope or anything in that matter you need to jump! I'm stuck here! Luckily, Witchy World is my favorite world in this game. I love the theming. Da, da, da. A great place to find five more jiggies. <laughs> the 
the 10 available jiggies to win in Witchy World are Bringing the Cactus of Strength Surviving the Dive of Death On top the spiral slide in the Inferno Crazy Castle's Hoopery Challenge Crazy Castle's Balloon Shoot minigame Riding the Saucer of Peril Climbing the Stars of the Star Spinner Winning the Dodgem Challenge Defeating Mr. Patch And rounding up the Boggy Children And I can't do anything here! Out of all of these jiggies to get, I could only kill Mr. Patch for one. I just need four more jiggies to unlock the fourth world, but Wumba's Wigwam is too high to reach, and every other jiggy requires climbing the attractions, or money from Wumba's transformation, and not even bomb boosting or damage boosting off enemies helps us. The only other scraps of progress I was able to get were three new moves. Airborne Egg Aiming, Split Up, and the Pack Whack. Don't get me wrong, I love the split up feature in this game. Many of the jiggies are designed around it. Good thing it was on ground level. But I want to focus a little bit on Banjo's new ability, the Pack Whack. No, it doesn't help us climb anything as Banjo. Well, kind of. If you use this ability in the air, you are granted an extra jump with Banjo. If you remember how I defined a jump, pretty much you can't press A on a flat surface or on the surface water to gain height. I didn't say anything about the air. So will I use this broken ability? Fuck no! It's called a fucking jump, what do you think? That's something a lawyer would do. Kids, don't be a lawyer, they cheat. Or be one, I don't know, they make good money. To add to everybody's disappointment, I can't even get Big Al's burgers for the children. Won't somebody please think of the- I was so desperate for any jiggy, I spent two hours trying to clip through boulders, and another two hours trying to get a single Jinjo on top of the big top tent. Emphasis on the trying. I couldn't even do that. I guess that's how far the run will go. If I have to jump 500 times, it's almost not worth counting. Or is it? I'm no quitter. We have to find something that works. Anything. I didn't think it could be done, but with this, there might be a chance. Typically, you would do a nice big jump to activate the build drill, but we don't have that luxury. There might be a way to destroy these boulders, but we have to gain height elsewhere. And so the grind began. Okay, now what? Make your dreams come true! We did it! But more importantly, we discovered something new! The fraction of height you get when you walk off the edge of the boulder while spamming Z is enough to trigger the move. But what should we call this new move? That's boulder. Close, but how about boulder dashing? Part and pending. You don't understand. That's boulder. Now that we have a name for this technique, let's see if we can use it on the other boulders around the world.
With the boulders out of the way, I was able to round up all the loose TNT, reunite Dilberta with Bully and Bill, brave the power shed, and finally rescued the white Jinjo family. Thank God he's white. I mean no disrespect, but the white Jinjo just gives you a free jiggy. This mine was my greatest hurdle, but now it's my greatest strength. With exactly enough jiggies, we were able to complete Jiggy Wiggy's Challenge 4 and open the fourth world of the game, Jolly Roger's Lagoon. The 10 available jiggies to plunder in Jolly Roger's Lagoon are... 20 doubloons for a jiggy aponios. Protect crispy bacon. Inside a see me fish. Get the UFO back up and running. Free Mary Maggie Malpass from the big fish. Win the submarine shootout. Defeat Lord Wu Fak Fak. Inside the smuggler's cavern. Clean and warm the piglet's pool. And finally hatch Tip Tup's very overdue son. Did you notice something when I was listing off those jiggies? Yeah, that's right. Most of them are underwater. The no jump rule can't limit us here, right? This should be a cakewalk. We need a total of 20 to unlock the next world, meaning 6 more jiggies to collect. I should mention I went to Spiral Mountain beforehand to get the faster swim speed, and a new move for Kazooie, the Briegel Bash. It works great for collecting doubloons, among other things. Another interesting new move in this world is the Wing Whack, which may prove to be very useful in the future. Like Banjo's Double Jump, Kazooie can use this move again in the air by pressing B. Since we don't gain height and only distance, it's not a jump. It's more like a glide. Now back to the Jiggy Hunt. I never thought I would be happy for a water level, but with no breath gauge, pretty tight swimming controls, and no need to jump, I'm stoked! The Jiggies I was able to get, with no trouble, were saving crispy bacon, turning Lord Wu Fak Fak belly up, winning the submarine shootout, and freeing Mary Maggie from the big fish. Now that's less than half the jiggies, and here is where the problems arise. There is a very important move in the electric eels lair called the Talon Torpedo, which is required to access the next area. You might be thinking, oh, is there a lot of eels stopping you? There's like two eels here, one more than any other room in Atlantis. The actual devilish fiend stopping me is a ledge. Now I've tried bomb boosting. I've tried bomb boosting into the flame. I've tried luring one of the two eels to me. I even tried using the submarine. Pretty sure even if I got to jam jars with the sub, I wouldn't get the move, but that was the closest I got. So sadly, this is where we have to make another jump. On the bright side, this move allows us to obtain at least two more jiggies. One from inside the sea me fish, and another for helping power up the stranded UFO. The rest of the Jiggies require moves from other worlds, but 21 Jiggies in total is enough and we're on to the second half of the game. I had a goal when I first set out to do this run and that was to get to the Wasteland. Once you get to the Wastelands, you gain access to the Clockwork Kazooie Eggs, a new type of egg with a robotic Clockwork Kazooie that can be controlled independently. With these eggs, this game is cracked wide open. Now if I see an item too high up, I can just take aim and fire. Let's just hope it'll be enough. But for now, let's do a little cleanup in the previous worlds. So don't stop me Somebody better hide their jiggies better because we are unstoppable! The clockwork eggs even help me activate warp pads. Meaning Mumbo Skull and Glitter Gulch Mine is a possibility. Well, it always was, but I just didn't have enough patience to boulder dash the entire way up. Now, halfway is fair. With Mumbo Mobile, we can also get the Crushing Shed Jiggy and bring Chuffy the Train back online. Anyone that has played Banjo-Tooie knows how important the train is to the game. Chuffy is required to gain access to Grunty's Industries, 
meaning it directly influences getting 13 Jiggies. With only 20 Jiggies of leeway, this train is essential to completing the game. The problem is, we have to jump to access it, and a train station surface is too flat to do a boulder dash. Or is it? Hold it. Run that back. Wait, stop. Stop. Pause it. Zoom in right here on this spot. Can you clear that up any? I don't know. Let's enhance it. Potato, 75 degrees. Did you see that? Banjo gained a little height here. Let's exploit this. By building up speed for 14 hours, I was able to cross seven parallel universes, or PUs for short. Nah, I just spammed Z and finally got the thing to work. With this, and the defeat of Old King Cole, I not only got all the Jiggies and Jinjos in my first world, but also opened up the possibility for many more Jiggies. On a sour note, my favorite world is quickly becoming my least favorite world. Well, at least I finally got the yellow Jinjo I wanted so bad. As well as access Humbo Wumba by throwing a clockwork Kazooie, I get her war pad. Having access to both Mumbo and the transformation, I thought this would be... A whole new world. But no, it's the same shit. The only difference is it helped me get that one jiggy from the dodgem challenge. Not even these insane Kazooie skills help me get the jiggy from the star spinner. I'm just too short. And clockwork Kazooie eggs also won't help. Overall, we are a flunking witchy world with only two jiggies gotten here. The cleanup was still effective. Now we have enough jiggies to open up the sixth world, Grunty's Industries. But let's be honest, that place is a shithole, so let's go to Terry Dactyland instead. The 10 available jiggies to excavate in Terry Dactyland are Defeat Terry, Under Terry's Nest. Champa's Belly minigame. Defeat the Rocknut tribe. Roar at the gate on the mountain with Baby T-Rex. Warm and feed the Oogle Boogle tribe. Hatch and return Terry's eggs. Get past the Stomping Plains. Help Scrotty with her kids. And finally get Dippy some water. First things first, this place sucks if you don't jump. See this ledge? No way to get over it. So every time you want to get on the other side, which is often, you have to take the long way around. I advise you throw a clockwork egg at Wumba's war pad as soon as possible to cut the walk in half. Ha, here I am giving advice like someone is actually going to try this challenge. Well if you are, you're going to have a tough time here. Because there are five jiggies held at the top close to Terry's nest. The only way of accessing them is plastered on every wall. Signs that might as well say, jump here. One of the new moves here is the Super Ultra Mega Jump using the Spring Step Shoes. And of course that was the one I was able to get along with the Hatch move for Kazooie. But heavens forbid I get a move I actually need like the Taxi Pack without jumping. So we need to find another way to the top and Clockwork Kazooie eggs don't work. But you know what's really cool about this world? You get to transform into a baby T-Rex. It's just so cute! And look at that, I got stuck in the mud like an actual dinosaur. That's fine, because the real highlight of this world is stomping around as a big T-Rex. And I got stuck in the water! <laughs> wow, these transformations suck! I don't even want to use them. Instead, let's show off a new trick I learned from the speedrunning community. Gate clips. Not patent pending. Let's see here. Mark, the half-assed employee he was, didn't finish modeling the gates in the game. So most of them can be clipped through with clockwork kazooie eggs. All you need to do is zoom in really close to Mark's imperfections and shoot an egg. Then presto bammo a jiggy and no need for a dinosaur. The clockwork eggs even took care of the rocknut tribe for another jiggy. And that's about everything we can do on the ground. The other jiggies require you to go back and forth between worlds with moves we don't have. Cough! Taxi pack! Oh. In search for a way to the top, I spent a good time trying to reach the flight pad inside the mountain. Luckily, with a wing and a prayer, I can just reach it using Kazooie's wing whack ability. With this, we can reach the top, where there's a gate blocking my way. Or is there? That's right! You see that clutchness? I am fucking clutch! Look at this fucking line I take. I'm like, yeah, baby! Fucking do this! I wait, I wait, I wait. Right when he starts firing, they try to back push me, the double. Body armor. Two quick ones, I already know I'm getting there on the perfect line. Look at the fucking pace! 
50, 49, 47, baby! That's fucking right! That's fucking it! Fucking pump watching this one again! And that, my friends, is how we climb mountains without jumping. From there, it's an easy two jiggies from Terry, and one from the stomping planes using the golden feathers. And we can finish everything up with a swan dive! Swan dive! A swan dive into Chompa's spire to help him with his stomach problems. That's 36 jiggies, enough to open the seventh world of the game because you can't make me go to Grunty's Industries, I don't wanna go there! <laughs> the 10 available jiggies to discover in Hailfire Peak are Through Pterodactyland Stomping Plains Coliseum Kickball Tournament Climb the Coliseum Inside the Volcano Feed Boggy some fish Defeat Chili Billy and Chili Willy Save Saberman, help the aliens kids, activate the oil drill, and finally Icy Side train station. I've been waiting to get some business done here ever since we left the first world. Gotcha scumbags, you thought you could keep me out, but I found the back entrance. Now where's my hookers and boo- oh, oh. So this is a legitimate sporting facility. Good to know. Well, it wasn't a stony rape party like I would have hoped, but I did win the Mayhem Kickball Tournament for one jiggy. It's a shame I can't get into Hailfire Peak as a stony for another easy tournament jiggy. I could fire hop in if these torches were just a little lower, but that's not the case. Speaking of foreshadowed jiggies, Remember how I said Chuffy helps us with 13 jiggies? Well, one of them is in the ice side train station. Problem is, we have to cool the engine first, meaning a 30 minute long back massage for Gobi, before I was able to boulder dash on him and get that sweet nectar inside. So, a happy ending for me, and probably not for Gobi. Inside the volcano, we have a platforming challenge from Hell, where we press buttons as they rise from the lava until the jiggy appears. About 90% of this is possible with boosting off the lava. The other 10% can be completed with Solo Kazooie and the Wing Whack ability. A very useful ability, but I think it's time we upgraded. Just beyond this room, Kazooie can learn the Glide ability. Now we can fall off a ledge and glide indefinitely, losing only a little height. Banjo also gains the Shack Pack ability, which squishes him down to a smaller size, while also protecting him from hazardous liquids. Using this ability, we can get a Jiggy from the Oil Rig, and feed Boggy the fish we found in the boiling lake for another. Where did my mountain go? These jiggies were only possible because we had some outside help. Right in front of the oil rig and Boggy's home are multiple massive ledges. I want a mountain go! All I could do was get on my knees and pray to the heavens, to which my prayers were answered in the form of an icy meteor of love. I was bestowed the strength to conquer these cliffs. God, was that you? The benevolent Lord Chili Willy was also helpful in assisting my rescue of the alien children. The last Jiggy I got should have been easy, it's behind a gate. But this time, Mark actually did his job for once. So no matter how many times I tried, I couldn't clip through. Good thing Chili Billy is just as kind as his brother. With his fireballs of friendship, we can easily make it to all of Banjo's switches revealing our 43rd Jiggy. Now we only need two more to open the 8th world. Cause like I said, screw Grunty's Industries. Fuck that. So forgive me, but I get pretty desperate here looking for any Jiggy or Jinjo I might have missed. This led me to hatching Tip Top Sun, and finally getting into the drain pipe to clean the piglet's pool. Now all we need to do is warm the water. Among messing around in Witchy World, trying to get anything, absolutely anything, I was able to glide into the burger button from the top of the big top tent, finally opening up Big Al's Burgers for the children. But even more interesting was when I discovered this. Haha, you can't climb ladders. Oh fucking climb ladders! Who taught you to do that? If you cancel Banjo's Shack Pack ability next to any climbable object, Banjo will, well, climb. And it was not as helpful as I thought it would be. Correction, to get anything in Witchy World, you need to climb and jump. 
but that doesn't mean it won't be helpful in the future. Only one more Jiggy, and there has to be something I missed. I just need the motivation to find the answer. That's right, with just the right angle, with just the right height, and just enough speed, you can reach targets and sacred relic. With 45 Jiggies on hand, we can finally shoot for the sky and travel to Cloud Cuckoo Land. The 10 available Jiggies to get cucked by in Cloud Cuckoo Land are... Inside the Pot of Gold Inside the Trash Can Defeat Minji Jongo Canary Mary's Rematch Defeat all the Eyeball Plants The Zubba's Nest Find Super Stash's Combination Inside the Jelly Castle, Inside the Cheese Wedge, and finally beat Mr. Fit. I said cucked, but this is probably one of the easiest levels in the game. Partially because there are flight pads everywhere, making most of the jiggies very accessible. And if that's not enough, the B transformation allows you to fly from anywhere you want. All we have to do is run off the edge and spam A, and we are flying. Just like that, two easy jiggies from defeating all the eyeball flowers and shooting down all the skinny bitches in the Zubba's hive. The rest of the jiggies are kind of a joke here, so let's quickly go over most of them. Starting with the jiggy we get for beating Canary Mary for the third time. I rescued the pink Jinjo family using the clockwork Kazooie eggs. I sacrificed George the Ice Cube to warm the piglet's pool in Jolly Roger's Lagoon. I found some rainwater to quench Dippy's thirst in Terry Dactyland. The last red Jinjo was laughably easy. His brother in Hail Fire Peak was much more difficult to reach. The safe was cracked and plundered. You could clip through like we did with the gates, but I was starting to feel bad for Mark. It's just nice to win one. The trash can and pot of gold minigames were pretty standard. The only difficult part was landing on the coin switch to open the pot of gold. And finally, the Minji Jongo fight was kind of intense, not gonna lie. If you're looking for a challenge, try fighting him without jumping. There's only one new move in this world, and we have exactly enough notes. It's called the Sack Pack, and well... Didn't I already go over this? Chew! Get out of here! Go away! I didn't press A, this is out of my control! Now there's a lot we can do with this ability, like bounce on the surface of water. But the most useful is we get a pretty big leap forward out of it when we cancel the move. Very useful in crossing gaps as Banjo, and climbing up beanstalks not connected to the ground. It would be great to show off my new ability to Mr. Fit in the sack race, but I can't get off the beanstalk without pressing A. Or in other words, jumping off. But it is good enough to get into the pump room and inflate the bouncy castle. Do I finally smell progress in Witchy World? Not really. The Hoop Hurry minigame might be possible if you're the second coming of Christ, because the only rings you can get through are the red and green ones with the inaccurate wing whack ability. And when I say green ones, I only got it to work once. I'd rather take the loss on the timed minigame designed for jumping through hoops, which I don't even know is possible. My highest score was 13. I do have to say it feels wrong not being able to jump in a bouncy castle, but I never said this challenge would be easy. The Balloon Burst minigame on the other hand is just a standard jiggy which we can collect with a clockwork kazooie egg. I've opened up this place a while ago. I think it's finally time we punched in for our shift at Grunty's Industries. Aw, oh, shit! We have to make a big jump to get there. This is a bad start to my first day on the job. Well, we don't want to be late. The 10 available jiggies we can earn at an hourly rate in Grunty's Industries are Survive the Trash Compactor Pack the Twinklies Defeat Weldar Blast the Barrels Destroy the Clinkers Fly to the Roof Wash the Rabbit Worker's Clothes Take a dip in the Toxic Waste Defeat the Tin Tops And finally wade across the Toxic Waste the reason I was avoiding this place for so long is because it's a vertical maze and the elevator is broken. Almost everything is actually broken here, requiring us to collect batteries to power up the equipment. The problem is we need the taxi pack ability in Terry Dactyland to carry the batteries. 
So I don't know how much I can do here. Besides get the Claw Clamor Boots ability from Janjars and use it to defeat the Tin Top security system for the first Jiggy here. But to progress past floor 1, we're going to have to think creatively. How is that for creative? There's a glitch that levitates Banjo when he uses a sack pack ability on a sloped surface partially submerged in water. With this we skipped floors 1 to 5 and landed on the roof. On the roof we gain access to a warp pad and a flight pad, as well as an easy jiggy by falling through to the 5th floor. From the roof we can also access the 4th floor through the fire exit, but there's not much to do there besides get crushed. The good stuff must be behind the compactor. Using the flight pad we can fly into the third floor through the hole in the smokestack. This earns us a jiggy from completing the blue Jinjo family. From the third floor we can fall down into the second floor through the elevator shaft. But the electromagnetic chamber has nothing for us, probably because we glitched our way in. But another way to access floor 2 is to shoot a clockwork egg into the loading zone from floor 1 and make a break for it to Wumba's warp pad. Look at this fucking line I take! I'm like, yeah, baby! Like an onion, we are slowly peeling back the layers of the pungent puzzle that is Grunty's Industries. But this place still stinks, and I can't think of anything else to do. Maybe Febreze? Nah, that won't work. Hmm, Febreze. Febreze. Freeze! I know, let's go consult Lord Chilly Willy now that we have the Claw Clamor boots. Oh lord, I have traveled up this mountain and fallen many times to meet you. Please guide me to my next step. Chilly Willy continues to impress. Not only did he give me good advice, he also helped me across the gaps with his tongue. They really are the most chill bosses in this game. Well, I'm out of options. We need the taxi pack ability to progress. So again, we have three options. We can get the move normally, which is too many jumps to count. It was just two jumps. I counted. So we can either use the pack whack ability with two jumps, or the sack pack ability with one jump. Or none of these options because I was able to get up there with no jumps by canceling the sack pack move and boosting off the snapdragon. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the taxi pack ability. Children rejoice on the streets. Women fear him. Men revere him. He is the Sack Man. I'm the Sack Man. With this ability, we can finally bring power to all of Grunty's industries. Or not. I can't get into that tank over here without jumping. That's a real shame. There's a snooze pack ability in there along with a jiggy. For those that don't know, the snooze pack ability allows Banjo to regain health and is used to get two jiggies in the game. But I think we can do better than that using the honey back cheat. If you were wondering if I was collecting pages too, yes, 20 to be exact. I had to go face Canary Mary for the last one, and oh god, there is no button mashing minigame I dread more, and I've played every Mario Party. With this cheat in tandem with the sack pack ability, Banjo can get the trash compactor jiggy, as well as another jiggy from the stomping planes. So long as we have more than one health when we get crushed, we won't die. So we can also get past the compactor on the 4th floor. The alternative would be to bring Mumbo to temporarily shut off the machine and quickly switch back to Banjo. But once he steps out of his home, he can't get back in, making this and the Weldar Jiggy impossible. The rest of the batteries can be easily gotten with the impressive arsenal of moves we acquired for Banjo, including the newfound ability to climb. And thus, almost every door and room is fully operational. I can now say with certainty that Grunty's Industries is not as big a problem as I thought. The tin tops are downright helpful at times, giving me a boost when there was nothing to boulder dash off of. I think it's time I stopped breaking things and actually did some work. I will start by rescuing the brown Jinjo family, then remove all the clinkers from the air vents, do a little quality control on the barrels, and last but not least, do some manual labor in the packing room. 
You would think that the washing machine would have an easy jiggy not designed around jumping, and for the most part you would be right, company elevator, ramps for access and egress, but one of the dirty bunnies to clean requires a jump. This transformation is about as useful as the underwear it spits out. But that really isn't a big problem now because we only need one more jiggy! And there's actually a few options to us if we're skilled, which I'm not. If you use a glitch that involves switching places with a clockwork kazooie egg when entering a new room, I don't know exactly how this works, but using it you can get the jiggy in the waste disposal plant without defeating Weldar, and possibly the jiggy in the cheese wedge. I couldn't do either. There's also a way to get the jiggy in the jelly castle by beak bombing at a certain angle, but even the glitch hunters have a tough time reproducing that glitch. I tried all of these jiggies for hours including some other ones, but the one that I sought to have the most promise was rescuing the green Jinjo family. My problem was this tiny, minuscule little ledge was stopping us from beating the game, and there was no way around it. Clockwork Kazooie eggs just barely didn't reach, but my persistence and a whole lot of eggs paid off. By saving the second to last Jinjo family we finally have exactly enough jiggies to beat the game. All that's left is a quiz show and facing off against Gruntilda Winky Bunyan. And here is where the run completely and utterly falls apart. I was pretty happy with myself, only 3 jumps in the entirety of Banjo-Tooie. I think that's a big accomplishment, but in this final fight, which oh my god is difficult as hell, when it comes to these lasers you have to use the golden feathers until you run out, which you will, and very soon at that. Then it's just taking them to the face like a man. So yeah, I used the honey back cheat to make it manageable after failing 10 times. But the biggest problem is our greatest ally this run becomes our undoing. To destroy the Hagwon, the weaponized drill tank that destroyed our stairs in the beginning of the game, put a boulder in our path in the wasteland, and decided to drive up the wall to the quagmire. You know, actually it's not the Clockwork Kazooie Egg's fault. Grunty and the Hagwon caused all of our jumps up until now. To destroy this piece of shit machine you need to blow up two batteries using the clockwork kazooie eggs. Problem is, to reach the batteries you need to jump into the Hag 1. Then jump two more times over electrical cords before reaching one battery. That's three jumps! And we have to do another three for the other battery! As of my knowledge there is no way of skipping this segment, or blowing up two batteries at once. The best I could do was aim my clockwork kazooie egg directly at the Hag 1's opening, to bypass the first jump saving a total of two jumps. After that travesty it's an all out shootout with Grunty, and the game is beaten with a grand total of 7 jumps and exactly 70 jiggies. A true testament to what enough concentrated autism can achieve. Now if I was higher on the spectrum maybe I would have seen how many jumps it would take to 100% the game, but who would want to see that shit show? Before I'm asked a hundred times in the comments, yes I know of the trick of getting to the final boss early. But honestly I think that method of beating the game is kinda dumb. It requires prep work on other files so I wanted my challenge to be completed upon starting the game for the first time. As for a lesson we can learn from this experiment, jumping makes life a lot easier, but not as fun. The feeling of joy and discovery I got from getting a jiggy I thought to be impossible was overwhelming. There are so many cool mechanics in this game that aren't possible in Banjo-Kazooie. I definitely recommend this game and give it my personal score of 10 broken ankles out of 7 jumps. Was this a review or a challenge video? I don't know anymore. I'm tired. I just hope I didn't forget anything. Come on man, help a brother out. I sit here on my shelf, just talking to myself.